The Roach's House is not for the faint of heart or weak stomached. The Roach's House contains graphic verbal descriptions of animal skinning and gore. The Roach's House and everyone associated with it are not responsible for the injury or death caused by this podcast. The Roach's House highly recommends against eating or touching squirrels that have symptoms or signs of illness, including illness caused death. The Roach's House supports the use of hunting and roadkill collecting for fur and meat, but only if proper protocol is taken and country or state law is followed. Always check with your local fish and wildlife if it is legal for you to collect roadkill for fur and or meat beforehand. Always report any deer showing any signs of CWD or chronic wasting disease to the proper authorities. Hunt responsibly. This has been a disclaimer for the Roach's House. Welcome, beasts and feasts. My name is Dagwood, and I run the show. I've been hobbying taxidermy for about a year now, come to think of it. Today we will be answering a question by Sophia C. from Florida. Thank you, Sophia, who asks, How do I skin a squirrel? Well, my roaches, let's get into it. This is the Roach's House. First, let's look into how exactly we're going to skin this rodent. We have several methods at hand here case skinning, good for keeping the entire pelton intact, or the Brantley method, good for meat skinning. There's much more than that, including dorsal skinning and whatever else people call taking the skin off an animal, but today we will just be focusing on the first two. The Brantley method is very good for skinning your squirrel for meat, as it reduces the amount of time needed to skin the animal, less than five minutes, and the amount of stray fur ending up on the meat. The only problem is, is that it doesn't take the pelt much in mind, as it is fairly quick, and the goal is to remove the skin for meat preparation, not removing the skin for hide preparation. I have a pretty hefty boy here, a pound or so, eastern green male, 24 inches from nose to tail tip. It's quite a man, don't you think? Since I will be working on a male, my instructions will be as suit. I'm planning on both eating the meat and using the pelt for taxidermy, so I'll be doing a case skinning method, meat in mind. Keep in mind that while I do this, I'm cutting along the underbelly, and since this is a male, over and through the baculum. Possibly one of the most important things about skinning a squirrel, heck, skinning anything in general, is a blade. You're going to want to use a nice, hefty, curved belly knife, such as a gutting or keeping knife, but an exacto blade will do just fine too. Make sure to sanitize your blade before and after the procedure. Now, obviously, you're going to need to have clean hands for this. I lather my hands with soap and water before and after, just to be safe. If you have any open wounds on your hands or arms, it's best to use medical dust-free gloves, but I tend to go without, just because I find it easier. You will also be in favor of having a pair of wire cutters, game shears, or strong scissors to cut through the bone and tendons in this project. I'm going to be using a curved belly knife and work scissors. Make sure you have your blade, a pair of scissors or game shears, and gloves. But before we start skinning, it will be in your best interest to determine the sex of your squirrel. The distance between the anus and genital opening are the best ways to determine this, because squirrels usually have no sexual dimorphism. In males, it is usually a centimeter or so, and females are very close together. Males also have a baculum, while females do not. Now that we have determined the sex of our squirrel, we can begin. Flip the squirrel belly side up. Make sure that your game is either fully thawed or fresh. Make a gentle incision from the top of the anus upward. Be careful not to slice or puncture the peritoneum. You want to apply enough pressure just to cut through the dermis. I found it easiest to part the fur with the blunt end of your knife making as little fur residue as possible. As soon as you make your initial cut, it's smooth sailing from here. Glide your knife in the incision and go upwards, towards the genitalia. You can cut around it, but that makes it a wee bit harder to do. Now that we have a solid incision, you can see the intestines. Place your finger under the skin on the left and carefully separate the skin. You do not want to tear it, just free the skin from the body. Continue doing this on the other side. Now, take your knife and continue slicing upwards, parting the skin as you go. Once you reach the sternum, stop cutting and place the knife back down. Using the hide fraying technique, 
place both of your fingers under the slope you've made near the base of the tail. Your fingers should touch. Pinch your fingertips together and with brawn, thrust your fingers upward until they hit the legs. This is where your scissors or game shears will come in handy. Free the legs using your hands and fingers. Once you have slipped the legs out, peel the hide down to the ankle. Using your scissors or game shears, cut the bone and tendon. You want to keep the feet with the hide. Now, the skin from the base of the tail to the breastbone should be free and loose. If you can place your hand through it and have your fingers come out one side, you're doing it right. As much as you can, try to peel the skin at the back until you can't anymore or you hit the neck vertebrae, whichever comes first. Turn the squirrel so that the tail is further away from you than the head. With the blunt side of your knife, part the fur from the neck down, showing as much skin as possible. Now, starting at the top of the sternum, closest to the head, make an incision and carry it down to about half a centimeter before the last cut. Using your fingers, slip them underneath the half centimeter of skin, loosening the skin. Jut your fingers upward, breaking the skin. This should leave you with one visible laceration. Free the skin so that only the tail and head are still connected to the hide. Now we can deal with the tail. Since the skin around it is disconnected, just lightly peel it back about half an inch. Firmly grasp what is the skin tail and hold on to it tight. Place your other hand on the tail and gently pull straight upward. The tail should give, leaving you the bone and muscle of the tail. Congratulations! You're done with the hardest part. Going back to the skull, you'll need your knife for only a small portion of the section. Peel back the hide over the head. It will come to a point where the pelt stops at the top but continues on the bottom. This is where your blade comes in. At the top of the skull, you'll see a tiny shadow where the skin seems to connect with the forehead. Taking the tip of your knife, cut along this shadow. You will come across two tubes, halfway cut. These are the ear canals. Slice the rest off. Continue peeling until you reach the eyes. Very gently, you're going to cut the eyelids away from the eyes. Now, using your scissors or game shears, make a sharp, hard cut through the muzzle. The tongue should be left in the mouth. This is just an illusion. All you need to do is yank that sucker out. Congratulations! You've just tube-skinned squirrel. Save your hide and carcass in different bags in the freezer. Sanitize all of your tools and throw away any gloves you may have used. Make sure to wash your hands if you didn't wear gloves. Catch us next episode to learn how to mount this scare day with a cooking demo for the meat at the end. Thank you for visiting the Roach's house. We look forward to see you again. Be the Roach's house is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. The Brantley Method was created by Will Brantley, published in volume 210, issue 9 of Outdoor Life and Outdoor Magazine.